good morning all of you in this lecture we are going to discuss about a uh, power electronic component which is diode so before going on uh, the description of diode uh, the course objectives uh, of this uh, uh, lecture is to introduce students to the basic theory of power semiconductor devices and passive components their practical applications in power electronics to familiarize a uh, familiar uh, students to the principle of operation design and synthesis of different power conversion circuits and their applications to provide strong foundation for further study of power electronic circuit and systems the course outcome of this lecture after this lecture student will be able to understand the construction and working principle of diode and different type of diodes so uh, first we uh, these are the contents of this uh, presentation or lecture introduction uh, diodes electrical properties of solids semiconductors pn junctions semiconductor diodes special purpose diodes and diode circuits so first we will uh, discuss about what is actually diode this course adopts a top down approach to the subject and so far we have taken up black box view of active components such as opam and uh, it is now time to look inside the box we will start by looking at diodes and semiconductors then progress to transistor later we will look at more detail aspect of circuit design so first we will discuss about diode what is diode diode is an ideal diode passing electricity in one direction but not the other actually diode is a, a basically a semiconductor device device which is constructed by pn junction uh, so uh, a, a diode is a unit <laughs> it means in the diode current passes through only one direction not in its opposite direction from the diagram you can see this is the symbol of diode where this arrow shows this is the positive uh, positive terminal of diode and this bar shows this is the negative terminal of diode the positive terminal of diode is called anode and the negative terminal of diode is called cathode when you connect this through the battery then you have to connect positive terminal of the battery to the anode and negative terminal of the battery to the cathode so current can flow in only one direction this is called your forward current right and this is your ideal characteristics of diode iv characteristic which is called iv characteristics so we take on x axis voltage and y axis we take current when we draw the uh, when we draw the uh, graph between voltage and current you will get this uh, graph uh, which is ideal this is for uh, uh, powered bias okay now so one application of diode is in rectification the example below shows a half wave rectifier so it, it is very popular example of diode where you can use the diode so diode can be used for uh, uh, rectification rectification purpose so before going on this rectifier first i i want to tell you that what is rectification so rectification means conversion of ac to dc so you uh, you can see over here that this is your ac power this is your ac power and uh, this is sine wave uh, so this is the diagram of your half wave rectifier in which you are using one ac source one diode and this is your load which is resistive load so what we have to do when the ac passes through the diode this will conduct only in one direction already we have discussed this is unidirectional it won't conduct in negative direction it means when positive half of this cycle passes through this diode the anode of diode becomes positive and the bar terminal becomes negative so diode is in the forward bias and it will carry the current in this condition okay so you can see that for positive half wave you are you are getting output voltage okay so this is your input voltage this is your rectifier and this is your output voltage when negative waveform is passed through this circuit what do you see that the this terminal becomes negative and this bar terminal becomes positive okay so diode becomes your uh, become in reverse direction okay 
so diode will not conduct any kind of current so you can see over here that there is no output fine so this is your half wave rectifier by using the diode in practice practice no real diode has ideal characteristics but semiconductor pn junctions make good diodes to understand such device we need to look at some properties of material so electrical properties of solids there are three types of uh, uh, solids like conductor semiconductor and insulator for example first we will discuss about conductors so what are the conductors conductors means which carry the current so you can see from uh, this uh, a slide that uh, copper and aluminium comes in this category so uh, they have a cloud of free electrons in their outer layer at all temperatures above absolute zero if an electric field is applied electrons will flow causing an electric current so uh, in conductors you need not to put your uh, any effort to carry the current uh, first first then you have to apply a uh, electrical field and uh, you will get the current next is your insulator insulator is polythene or you can say plastic so electrons are tightly bound in insulators to atom so few can break free to conduct electricity so it is almost there is uh, almost zero free electrons and they don't conduct uh, electricity semiconductors semiconductors uh, is uh, silicon or germanium so at very low temperature so what are the property of silicon and or germanium these are called semiconductors at very low temperature these have the properties of insulators as the material warms up some electrons break free and can move about and it takes on the properties of a conductor a little bit of poor one so however semiconductors have several properties that make them distinct from conductors and insulators next is your semiconductors so what is semiconductor pure first we will discuss about pure semiconductors so what is pure semiconductors we have already discussed that uh, germanium and silicon are the semiconductor device, uh, device uh, components or material uh, which is used for uh, to making of semiconductor devices now uh, what is pure semiconductor so semiconductor pure semiconductors uh, have these following properties thermal vibration results in some bonds being broken generating free electron which move about for example if we uh, take a uh, silicon and uh, if, if we apply some temperature on that material so what happened some bonds of uh, electron break and free electrons uh, which moved out uh, these leaves behind holes which accept electrons from adjacent adjacent atoms and therefore also move about so electrons are negative charge carriers and holes are positive charge carriers so basically in semiconductor devices it works on the principle of electrons and holes so what happen what is hole hole uh, hole means uh, the vacant place the vacant place which was left by the electron okay so electron has negative charge and hole has positive charge right so at room temperature there are few charge carriers pure semiconductors are poor conductors this is intrinsic uh, this is <laughs> intrinsic conductors next so pure semiconductors are called intrinsic uh, semiconductors and uh, next what we do uh, for actually if we take pure semiconductors so conductivity is very small okay so a uh, micro amperes current can only only flow uh, through the, those semiconductors by applying some thermal uh, or uh, thermal force or temperature okay now what is doping doping is the addition of a small amount of impurities which drastically affect its properties so what we have to do first we will take some uh, pure semiconductors and some impurities we will add on those semiconductors so the addition of a small amount impurities drastically affects its properties 
some material from an excess of electrons and produce an n type semiconductors and uh, some material uh, form an excess of holes and produce p type semiconductors both n type and p type materials have much greater conductivity than pure semiconductors so this is uh, extrinsic conduction right so in later in previous slide we discussed about pure semiconductor so pure semiconductor the material as it is you are taking uh, germanium and silicon and you are not adding anything in those material that is your pure semiconductors or intrinsic semiconductors and if you add some impurities in those semiconductors or you do some doping that is called your extrinsic semiconductors okay so uh, if you are adding some electron like material which have excess uh, which have excess electrons in their outer layer so these kind of semiconductors are called n type semiconductor if you add some material which has holes in there or excess of holes those those are called p type semiconductors okay so you can see in the diagram the dominant charge carriers in a doped semiconductor electrons in n type material are called majority charge carriers other type are minority charge carriers the overall doped material is electrically neutral okay so uh, mobile positive charges bound negative charges and mobile so you can see the uh, from the diagram like uh, the dominant charge carrier in a doped semiconductor for example electron in n type uh, material are called majority charge carriers and other type are minority charge carrier for example if you take n type semiconductors from this you can see that these are the negative charges and bound positive charges okay if you have excess electrons if you have excess uh, charges which are which is negative that is your n type semiconductor from this diagram you can see your charge carrier is positive so mobile positive charges it is the excess of positive uh, positive charges so this is called your p type semiconductor then p type and n type materials are joined this form a pn junction fine majority charge carriers on each side diffuse across the junction where they combine with charge carriers of the opposite polarity hence around the junction there are few free charge carriers and we have our depletion layer also called a space charge layer okay uh, we can see this in the diagram so what is uh, from the diagram you can see that this is your p type uh, p type semiconductor this is your n type semiconductor in p type semiconductor you can see the number of positive charges is more then negative charge so it has the axis of holes right it has the axis of holes that's why this is called p type uh, semiconductor in n type semiconductor you can see that uh, the negative charge is in axis so uh, this is called your n type semiconductors okay now when you combine this uh, semiconductor p type and n type you can see that you will see your depletion layer over here so what happened basically this is uh, the diffusion of positive charge in one direction and negative charge in other produces a charge imbalance fine so what happened positive charge will attract to this direction and negative charge will attract to this direction so this is your charge imbalance and there is no charges you will create a layer where is uh, which is neutral or one side you can see this is negative charge and one side you can see only positive charge okay so this result in a potential barrier across the junction and uh, this is your diagram where this uh, y axis shows the charge and x axis shows the distance okay so this is your uh, 
diffusion layer or you can say depletion layer next is your potential barrier the barrier opposes the flow of majority charge carriers and only a small number actually you can see over here this what is potential barrier you are uh, you can see that this is your negative charge and this is your positive charge so what happened it will not allow to go positive charge over here and it will not allow to negative charge go over here so this is your potential barrier now if you want that there must be carry a current so you, first you have to break this potential barrier so the barrier opposes the flow of majority charge carriers and only a small number have enough energy to surmount it this generate a small diffusion current okay so there may there may be some charges which are flowing through one direction to another direction by that there a very small diffusion current will flow the barrier encourages the flow of minority carriers and any other come close to it it will be swept over this generates a small drift current okay actually the barrier encourages the flow of minority carriers you can see over here that this is your depl depletion layer okay so uh, what is uh, what is the minority charge in p type this is your electron like right? negative and what is the minority carrier in n type hole okay so due to minority carrier if there is some current flows that is called your drift current right so for an isolated junction these two current must balance each other and the net current is zero so again we can again uh, we can discuss this what is diffusion current diffusion current is flowing through the majority carriers so what is majority carrier in p type semiconductor in p type semiconductor majority carrier is holes and n type semiconductor majority carrier in carrier is electrons if Uh, the current is flowing through these majority carriers in the potential barrier so this is called your diffusion current and the other hand there are some minority carriers if the current is flowing through those minority carriers for p type semiconductor minority carrier will be electron and for n type semiconductor the minority carrier will be hole so it will generate a small current that is called your drift current so for an isolated junction these two currents must balance each other and the net current is zero next is your forward bias if the p type side is made positive with respect to the n type side the height of the barrier is reduced right if you connect p terminal to the positive terminal of the battery and n terminal to the negative terminal of the battery then what will happen the size of barrier automatically will reduce why it is happening we will discuss it later so more majority charge carriers have sufficient energy to surmount it the diffusion current therefore increases while drift current remains the same so there is thus a net current flow across the junction which increases with the applied voltage next is your reverse bias so what is reverse bias if your p uh, p type semiconductor you are going to connect this the negative terminal of the battery and n type semiconductor is going to connect to the positive terminal of the battery then it will become a reverse bias if the p type side is made negative with respect to the n type side the height of the barrier is increased the number of majority charge carriers that have sufficient energy to surmount it rapidly decreases the diffusion current therefore vanishes while the drop while the drift current remains the same so the only current is a small leakage current caused by drift current the leakage current is usually negligible because it is only few like nano amperes it is in nano amperes which is very small current so you can neglect this current current in a pn junction from the diagram you can see that hole is trying to move to the in n type semi in 
n-type semiconductor and the electrons tries to move in the p-type semiconductor right so when you connect p terminal to the uh, so the voltage direction will be uh, p type will be a positive and n type will be a negative if if uh, there are three examples of uh, this diagram first is your uh, first is your isolated another is your forward and third one is your reverse bias so what is isolated that you are not going to connect any battery across this this diagram okay there is no battery so this is your called isolated junction this is the diagram on, uh, on the y axis you can see the potential and this is your distance so in neutral condition you will get this kind of voltage at this point it will be constant right now in the forward bias in the forward bias you can see the p type is connected to positive terminal and n type is connected to negative terminal so it becomes uh, uh, becomes in forward bias and in the forward bias what happened the current will start to flow and the uh, depletion layer will reduce so you can see over here that initially the, the dotted line shows the initial depletion layer when uh when uh, voltage is connected across the terminals the depletion layer voltage comes down and this is the v so it becomes down and current starts flowing now in reverse direction you can see when p is connected to the negative uh, terminal and n type is connected to the positive terminal what happen the depletion layer is increases you can see the dotted line shows the depletion layer when was in isolated junction now in reverse direction it will increases so forward and reverse currents pn junction current is given approximate by this equation which is i is equal to is exponential ev upon neta kt minus 1 so where i is the current e is the electronic charge v is the applied voltage k is voltsman constant t is the absolute temperature and neta which is a greek letter is a constant uh, in the range 1 to 2 determined by the junction material for most purposes we can assume eta is equal to 1 so this is the diagram where you can see i is equal to is exponential ev upon kt minus 1 at room temperature if v is greater than plus 0.1 volt the depletion layer break down and current will start to increase you can see this is your vi characteristic of the diode so if v is greater than plus 0.1 the current will start to flow in the diode and if voltage is less than minus 0.1 in the reverse direction in the reverse direction if the voltage is less than minus 0.1 the current will not flow it's only drift current which is flowing just because of your minority carriers in p and n type semiconductors so forward and reverse current in ideal condition you can see that in the forward bias when diode is in the forward bias the current will start to flow and it will increase at after at some point and in, in the reverse bias the current will not flow in the reverse direction that's why diode is called unidirectional next is your silicon diodes so what is basically silicon diode generally have a turn on voltage of about 0.5 volt silicon diode if you want to turn on a diode there is some voltage uh, which is required minimum voltage required to turn on the diode and it will depend upon different different type of diodes so if we talk about silicon diode which is made by silicon so the turn on voltage is about 0.5 volt 
generally have a conduction voltage of about 0.7 volt have a breakdown voltage that depends on their construction perhaps 75 volt for a small signal diode and perhaps 400 volt for a power device so have a maximum current that depends on their construction so perhaps 100 milliampere for a small signal diode and perhaps many amperes for a power device so there are two types of diode it is normal silicon diode and another is your power power device so for small signal or small silicon diode the breakdown voltage will be 75 volt and for power diode the breakdown voltage will be 400 volt turn on and breakdown voltages for silicon so you can see from the diagram for a silicon diode <laughs> turn on voltage is 0.5 volt and you can see from this diagram that that turn on turn on voltage 0.5 volt and uh, from uh, gradually voltage uh, current start to increase and voltage is start to reduce voltage is less than 1 volt in the reverse direction you can see for a particular point current will not flow if you are uh, still you are increasing the reverse voltage that the current will start to flow and there will be a breakdown this is for silicon diode and this is straight line approximation for uh, silicon diode characteristic special purpose diode there are uh, many types of diode one of them is light emitting diode so we will look we will discuss it later in the last lecture it was already discussed next is your zener diode which is very important what is zener diode uses the relatively actually zener diode is uh, always work in reverse direction right previously uh, we studied about uh, silicon diode which was which was wor working in forward direction but zener diode is always work in reverse direction and the second thing it is always used to make the voltage constant to keep the voltage constant right so in n number of circuit zener diode is used to keep the voltage constant so zener diodes uses the relatively constant reverse breakdown voltage to produce a voltage reference breakdown voltage is called the zener voltage bz output voltage of circuit shows is equal to bz despite variation in input voltage v a resistor is used to limit the current actually what happened if uh, it is working in the reverse direction the voltage will uh, increase and it will you can see the previous diagram that here you can see if you are continuously increase uh, if you are conti continuously increasing the voltage in the reverse direction what will happen a minor current will flow for a some time at this point vbr there there will be a breakdown and current will start to increase in the reverse direction but you can see over here the voltage is not increasing it is constant so in zener diode what will happen the breakdown voltage is called the zener uh, voltage and output voltage of circuit uh, shown in equal to vz despite variation in the input voltage so voltage will remain in constant because you are applying it in reverse direction and there is a resistance which is connected in series with zener diode why this resistance is connected in series because in the reverse direction you can see the current will shoot up suddenly so to limit that current we are using a resistance in series with this zener diode scotty scotty diode so formed by the junction between this is the another type of diode so we have uh, seen a uh, silicon diode power diode zener diode and this is your schottky diode schottky diodes formed by the junction between a layer of metal okay in previous diode we were taking only semiconductors there were no metals but in schottky diode we take a layer of metal for example metal is your aluminum and a semiconductor 
So action relies only on majority charge carriers, obviously, which will be our electrons. Much faster in operation than a PN and junction diode. Has a low forward voltage drop about 0.25 volt. And used in, it is approximate half forward voltage drop in signal diode. So used in the design of high speed logic gates. Next is your tunnel diodes. It is high doping level and reproduces a very thin depletion layer, which permits tunneling of charge carriers, resulting in a characteristic with a negative resistance. Okay, so you can see over here that this is on the x-axis, there is a voltage. On the y-axis, there is current. So high doping level is required for this diode, and there, there will be a very thin depletion layer. There will be a there will be a small uh, depletion layer, so there is a negative resistance region. So this is called your negative resistance region. Okay, so used in high frequency oscillators where they can be used to cancel out resistance in passive components. Okay, if you want to cancel out your uh, uh, resistance, so what you have to do? If there, there is a resistance, suppose, plus 2 ohm, and you want to cancel out this resistance, so you have to connect the negative resistance in series with that resistance. So you have to con connect minus 2 ohm resistance with, uh, with that resistance, so it, it can neglify the effect of resistance, positive resistance, right? Vector diodes. These are a reversed bias diode, has two conducting regions separated by an insulating depletion region. This structure resembles a capacitor. Variation in the reverse bias voltage change the width of the depletion layer and hence the capacitance. So this produces a voltage dependent capacitor. These are used in applications such as automatic tuning tuning circuits, which is very important. We will discuss it later. <laughs> Next is your diode circuits. So we have already discussed, uh, discussed half wave rectifier. It is connected, half wave rectifier is always connected, only one diode, one AC source and resistance. So peak output voltage is equal to the peak input voltage minus the conduction voltage of the diode. This voltage minus this voltage will be equal to output voltage. We are connecting a capacitor to make the output voltage constant. This is uh, the reservoir capacitor used to produce a steadier output. Okay. Full wave rectifier in full wave rectifier we will use four diodes. This is your bridge type rectifier because these four diodes are making a bridge. So we are using over here four diodes, D1, D2, D3, and D4. Use of a diode bridge reduces the time for which the capacitor has to maintain the output voltage and thus reduces the ripple factor. So you can see over here that you are get, getting output for positive and negative wave also. But in the half wave, you can see that you were getting output voltage only for positive half cycle. So this is your full wave rectifier. Signal rectifier, it is used to de demodulate full amplitude modulated signals. Full amplitude signal and demodulated signal. This is your signal rectifier. This is your clamping circuits. Clamping a simple form of signal conditioning, which is very important for electronics branch. Clamping and clipping. So a simple form of signal conditioning, single conditioning means you are making your signal smooth. Very simple. By the using of diode. So circuit limit the exertion of the voltage waveform. Can be used, can use a combination of signal and zener diodes. Catch diode used when switching indu inductive loads 
the large back emf can cause problems such as arcing in switches so catch diodes provide a low impedance path across the inductor to dissipate the stored energy the applied voltage reverse bias the diode which therefore has no effect when the voltage is removed the back emf forward bias the diode which then conducts key points diodes allow current to flow in only one direction at low temperature semiconductor acts like a insulator at higher temperatures they begin to conduct doping of this is the summary of this lecture actually doping of semiconductor leads to the production of p type and n type materials a junction between p type and n type semiconductor has the properties of a diode silicon semiconductor diodes approximate the behavior of ideal diode but have a conduction voltage of about 0.7 volt there are also a wide range of special purpose diodes diodes are used in a range of applications and these are your uh, reference book these are the objective questions after this lecture i hope you would be able to solve these uh, questions if you have any query you can ask thank you